and this with quite a few students at a time, but for some reason it is really bogging right at the moment. Well, maybe I can just save it and continue on. You also have a choice of background, but the important part here is publish. You don't need to name it. You don't need to have an account, although you can. And I'm going to go in here, and for most sites, I'm going to click, and I'm going to copy the code. And I can go back into the demonstration wiki, and I'm going to go right on the front page and insert plugin. And for those of you who are trying desperately to follow this, there are instructions, like I said, on that handout. And I'm going to use here, bulky speaking avatar. I actually wrote the PB Works people and I said, when they clamped down on their security so that we couldn't paste in things anymore, they actually said, okay, we'll work on it. And they gave me a spot because they said a number of other people were using wikis in their um, PB Works pages too. So when I get done with this, I'm going to save my page. And now I have a talking avatar right in the front page. I'm a little bit leery to say that you should test it out um, if you're still in the demo wiki because I'm not sure what it's going to say. Um, hopefully it got, hello, this is Marlene. PB Works did, yes, did used to be PB Wiki, yes. I'm not sure why they changed their name. It is still a wiki, but apparently because of a lot of the um, businesses that are using PB Works now for a number of other things other than wiki, and I'm not quite sure what that would be. Um, they changed it from PB Wiki to PB Works, which I thought was pretty silly. But anyway, here it is. Oh, good, Carl. I'm glad it was <laughs> whatever that other one was. So there you see how easy it was to just stick that into your wiki page. Um, you can get the handouts, as I said, from my blog at the Digital Safari website. And it will show you step by step how to do this. Um, if you didn't follow as I was doing it quickly. So let me just demonstrate a couple of other things you might want to take a look at in the last few minutes I've got here. I guess I've got maybe 10 minutes left. How many of you know VoiceThread? It's your little smiley face. Have you used VoiceThread or know of it? Well, I'm seeing a frowny. Not frowny. Well, okay, a couple of you do, a couple of you don't. Um, let me show you what this one is like. Um, when I go in, I'm going to log in. This one, you do need an account. That's one thing about all the Web 2.0 tools is you need an account for everything. And I tend to use, don't tell anybody, the same password for all of these just because I don't want to have thousands of passwords, Carl. <laughs> so I have one that I use for lots of them. Oh, I don't know if Phil wants me to show, him, show that oh, yeah. one. <laughs> Phil was a real super sport once, and I was asking him for a series of photos to actually tell a story. And so we have Phil's morning routine as one of the um, voice threads in my account. He was great. Um, he actually let me take a picture of him getting out of bed and in the shower and washing his hair and brushing his teeth, all sorts of things. Anyway, here is what a voice thread looks like. It has the window that's there. You can navigate, and this one I just set up as a series of hats. And I think a couple of people have come in and actually commented, if I see anything here. There we go. Here's um, one from um, one of my colleagues here at the University of Minnesota. And again, because I'm playing this on my computer, you probably can't, well, let me copy it and see if I can get it to you this way. You probably can't hear anything, but if you went there, you would hear that you could, the comments, and I'll click the button down here to show you. The comments, you can do again a phone to make a comment. This one, however, after like three of them, they'll start charging you for them. So this phone one isn't quite as nice as with the Valkyries. You can record a little webcam. You can do a voice record. You can type, or you can upload a voice file that you've created with Audacity or something um, along those lines. And so um, as you go along from picture to picture, there you see she did hers as an audio comment. And so you can go through, and this one doesn't have many of them, but there are 
a lot of them that have times. Let me see if I can find. Um, I don't have any of those in here. Let me go back to the Carla Summer Institute and I'll show you a couple that are here. Maybe I won't because you can't hear them unless you go to them yourself. So um, maybe I'm not going to show you, but if you go back into VoiceThread in the Yellow Wiki, they have a nice little one here that will show you a little bit about um, how VoiceThread works. And you can see the fir very first example of a family picture that they did, which is hilarious. This looks like my mom when she was in college. Um, yes, Carl, you can put it up there to explore later. That would be fine. It's also linked on my um, blog page. Well, the blog page, my personal profile page, it's linked there. And that's where um, the handouts are as well. So this is apparently the picture that started it. You can click once, you can zoom in, you can move around, click once to zoom out again. And then depending on who you invite, again, if you leave it open, you can have things private or you can have them open for anybody to come in and talk. Um, but this one is a really nice little application for doing stories. I've seen this used in a couple of different ways. One as one student who does all of the slides and talks on each of the slides um, to tell their story. Or um, I've also seen it done where there is the teacher sets up a picture and has different students commenting on the same picture. And so there are a number of ways that you could use this um, to do, to create a story. And I'm going to start one here just to show you um, that you upload. You can do use media sources. I think it's linked right into Flickr. You can pull things over from Flickr. You can pull things over from a URL or you can upload them from your computer. And I have maybe some pictures in here. <laughs> I should have put them where I could easily find them. Here we go. Photos and I have still loop pictures in here. I have my sister's house redo, kitchen redo. We'll pull those in. And it pop, plops them right in. And then you can go to the next step, which is comment. And so you can add a comment to each of the pictures as you go through. Um, you'll see the four pictures there together will actually pull up all of them so you can navigate around quickly that way as well. And then at the end, uh, we have obviously the share page and there are different ways of doing things. Embedding again, you can send it in an email and this one again has that whole social part to it where you can invite friends to come and make comments on your, on your um, voice thread. This one also has, um, for any of you who are K-12 teachers, has a um, special K-12 site for VoiceThread where only people who are invited in by the teachers are able to friend each other and uh, add comments to each other so it's a more protected environment for those of you who are K-12. Um, down at the bottom, I'm probably moving my mouse too fast for it to catch up and follow. And I'm seeing Phil is even off screen. So maybe you can't see this unless you adjust your window. But down at the bottom of this window, yes, Carl, this site is totally free for three voice threads. Beyond three, you need to pay for it. But I've found that if you use one, you can archive it if you need to, but then you go on and just delete one and you can keep making new ones. Also, if you have three, each of your students can have an account, each of them can have three, so then you start having lots of voice thread possibilities for free in your classroom. Um, so again, there are, um, on the handout, there are more step-by-step -step, um, instructions for using this and Terry wants to know a definition of a voice thread again. Well, it's this application that does the